All right, guys, so in instead of testing some Amazon products, today we are gonna be testing some as seen on TV products. The first thing, I don't know how I never, I've always wanted one of these. I don't know how I never ended up with one or whatever, but I bought the Clapper. And from the look of this box, I don't remember what like year these things came out, but from the look, look at this box, it looks like it hasn't been updated in like 20 years or more. I think these things are really old. So if you don't know, it's literally just a device that you plug into a wall, you clap, it turns the device on and off. Very simple. So this is what it looks like. Very, very simple device. So what we should be able to do is we should take a lamp and instead of doing this, because who wants to do, who wants to turn a light on and off this way? Lame. Plug that in there. All right, let's see. It worked. It's got like some type of relay or something in there. Oh, it's got lights. Okay. So the lights light up with the claps. So if I just do, I didn't even do nothing. So I just do one. So I guess it just cancels out. I'm going to go to the other side of the room and see if it'll pick up my claps. That's pretty cool. That's like probably 15 feet away. Oh. That's really cool. Now it's got, each outlet has like a little, a, or a two and a three beside it. I assume, is that supposed to be how many claps? Okay, so it probably turned that outlet on, but there's nothing plugged into it. <laughs> okay, so you can have two things plugged in, <clears throat> clap two or three times, turn each thing on and off. Oh. Interesting. Will this work on just anything? Okay, so it'll work on just like any noise, I guess. <laughs> you can literally do anything. As long as it has two, two claps to it, you're good. That's not gonna work. <laughs> you could turn it on and off with a water bottle. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. I guess like maybe something about the tone has to be right or something before it'll like activate. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's a very simple test. It works. Uh, I don't know how many how many times you could click it back and forth before it'll uh, stop working, but. As far as I'm concerned, that works, and that is really cool. I, uh, I'm gonna have to find a very creative use for this, and I'll, I'll do something interesting. <laughs> Alright guys, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by AirUp. Now, AirUp has sent me one of their holiday bundles. It, this bundle that they sent me is called the Naughty List. I'm gonna tell you about the bundle, and I'm gonna tell you about AirUp and explain how they work. So, the Naughty List bundle comes with a water bottle, and it comes with three flavors. It comes with mango passion fruit, raspberry lemon, and orange vanilla swirl. What is Air Up and how does it work? So Air Up is a water bottle that adds flavor to your water, but unlike other water bottles that use like a powder or a syrup, Air Up does this through air. They do it through scent. So what you do is you have these scent pods that you add onto your water bottle and that adds your flavor. So for my demonstration, I'm gonna go with mango passion fruit. 
because I like mangoes. So each one of these packages has three scent pods in it, and it's super easy. All you do is open up your scent pod, put your scent pod on to the water bottle, and this water bottle actually has kind of like two modes. So like you can push the scent pod all the way down and just use it like a normal water bottle. It's just regular water, no flavor at all. And then whenever you want flavor, you kind of pull the, po the pod up just a little bit. And you'll know it's in the right place because you'll be able to hear it. When you hear that sound, the water is being aerated through the pod and the flavor is being added to your water. And you can taste it. And this mango passion fruit actually tastes really good. And it says right here on the package, each one of these pods is good for 1.3 gallons of water. So that is quite a bit of flavor. So if you are interested in this bundle, you can click the links in my description and you will automatically get 18% off, no code needed. So like I said, if you're interested, all of the links will be in the description. This next thing, I have, I don't know that I've ever seen a commercial for this. It says, as seen on TV, but I mean, I've seen like similar stuff to this and I had some similar stuff to this as a kid, but this is, I didn't even say what this is. This is amazing, el amazing elastic plastic. I feel like everybody had it whenever they were if they were a kid. Like that little putty that's like in a tube and you squeeze it out and you like blow balloons with it and stuff. Although on this package, they're showing some wild stuff like building a bear and like all kinds of stuff. So let's, yeah, this is literally what I remember. Just tubes of like goo. And you just like blow bubbles. It's like it's got an earplug ear plug in it or something. Oh, I gotcha. It's so little kids don't like suck in the putty. That's interesting, I guess. Open some of this stuff up. Uh huh. If I can, I'm like a snowman. It says, roll it, stick it, blow. All right, so let's roll it. I feel like I'm in third grade all over again. Let's stick it. Okay, interesting. Did I say we were gonna make a snowman? My memory is getting so so bad in my old age. I don't know if you could. I don't know if you could. I mean, I'm sure somebody could maybe make something similar to that. I'm gonna double double fist this red and green. Wow, for some reason, red is like so easy to come out of the tube. Like it's nothing. Green's a little bit tougher. Oh, the red stains your hands. I don't want my hands to be red. That's not cool. Red, I think, is going to be a problem. The putty seems very, very fragile. All right, let's see. Wow. Yeah, the red. Wow. The red just stains your hands like crazy. That kind of sucks. There's something like really wrong with this red. I guess we're only gonna have a uh, two-tier uh, two snowman. There we go. Look at that. It's a two-tier snowman. Maybe we'll go. And here we go. <laughs> Probably one of the worst creations that have ever been made with this stuff. Man, that stuff has a, has a stink to it. Oh, I can't get it off the table. Oh no, it's collapsing. Okay. So, that is uh, the amazing elastic beat. Amazing elastic plastic. Jeez, I don't know what else to say. You could, it works. You could make something with it. The red, there's like something really wrong with the red color, at least in this pack. So I turned off the camera. <laughs> then I decided that it was my duty to cut this tube open and get all the goo out and <laughs> see just how big of a uh, bubble I can blow with this stuff. I don't even know if that's gonna work. This is gonna be something. I don't know what this is going to end up being.
This is <laughs> this is pretty big. Nice. Oh, that was stupid. That was stupid. I'm getting lightheaded. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Although we have a couple weak spots right there, I think. That's where my fingertips are. I feel like this thing is just gonna go forever. Jeez. Where else is the air escaping from? I can like feel it. It almost can't fit in the frame anymore. I feel like... I feel like the air is getting out somewhere. Because I feel like it hasn't really gotten that bigger. And as soon as I stop blowing on it, you can see it kind of gets like... Like, deflated a little bit. So I feel like the, whenever I'm, the breaths I'm adding to it are only just keeping it inflated. Not inflating it more. Oh, I see where the air is coming from. Yeah, you can see just in this little time how like deflated it's gotten. The air is coming from this like little really thin spot right here. Uh, I don't know if I can repair that. Wow, look how much it's already deflated. Yeah, I can feel the air coming through there. So how big can you make it? Approximately this big. That is pretty cool. Moving on. Oh, this next item. <laughs> this is, this is so dumb. These are night vision glasses. They say that amazing green night vision glasses, battle vision, battle vision, night vision, a must for nighttime driving, bonus spare pair because you always lose your glasses. So, they just assume that you always lose your glasses. So they're gonna give you two because they're so good, you gotta have them. Reduce glare at night when driving. Astonishingly clear vision at night. So I don't even know what these are claiming to be. Obviously it says night vision. I guarantee these are not gonna help you like see in the dark. For brilliant nighttime contrast and clarity. The high tech lenses of battle vision night vision help you have astonishingly clear nighttime vision these extraordinary glasses reduce night glare, enhance color. So they reduce the glare and enhance the color. So they're like real-time color grading, I guess. And UV protection. And UV protection. I'm not, I'm no genius. We all know that. If you have a product that's supposed to be used during the night time, why do you need UV protection? Do you put sunblock on whenever you go at night? Do you like, do you get a moon burn? No. So why would you, need glasses that have UV protection at night. This is gonna be great. I'm sure this product is just gonna perform amazingly. The memory frames bend and twist, but snap right back into the original shape. Yeah, I saw something on the commercial about them being like super durable or something. Let's see. I that's not durable at all. I can literally snap those. Maybe that's what they're talking about, where it goes like, the extra little click. Maybe that's what they're talking about, the durability. You could definitely snap these and no, no problem. Let's see. Man, these things are so uncomfortable. So you can't wear a hat with them. I mean, granted it's not nighttime, but it literally just looks like a, a green, like you're just looking through a green piece of plastic. I don't see any, let me turn the lights off. Maybe, maybe if it's dark in here. As you can see, it's dark. Let me put on my night vision glasses. Oh, what do you know? I still can't see a thing. Nothing. So I know you can't see me, but to show how good they work, I'm gonna put the lens <clears throat> over the camera. Oh, you can kind of see me a little bit. I'm gonna put the lens over the camera. Oh. You can see me, wait a minute. So you can, 
you can kind of see me. Here's my hand. If I cover the lens, you can see me worse than you could before. You can see you can see more clear like this than you can with the with the lens over top of you. If anything, it makes your vision worse. Honestly, now that I see that, whenever I whenever I'm looking into the dark garage, it it, it does make it more difficult to see because the lens is tinted. So it's dark and it makes it just even darker. Wow, some night vision this is. So I don't know about you, but that <laughs> that looks like pretty good night vision to me. Yeah, it actually it makes it worse. I don't even know what else to say. This is just just trash. Let's see how how durable these things are. Okay. The lens kind of popped out. That's actually no big deal. It does say something about like reducing a glare or something. I'm gonna try something that's probably gonna be kind of stupid. I just, I'm just gonna turn on a flashlight. Pretend like this is a car's headlights or something at night. <laughs> okay, so if this was a car's headlights, instead of having car headlights blinding me that are white, now I have a green light that is blinding me. <laughs> and it's like just, since they're shaded, it's just a, a tinge uh, less intrusive, I guess. Oh, wow. That is so different. Oh, did my light die? These things are so powerful, they killed the light. All right, we'll use, we'll use this flashlight. This way, you guys can pretend like this is somebody's headlight. All right, now let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> see how effective that is? Now, instead of having that in your eyes, now you get this in your eyes. That is so much better. This works amazing. I don't know how I would ever live without these. I think you get the point. It's, uh, <laughs> these things suck bad. Now, one more thing I wanna know, since these things are useless in pretty much every single way, do they have any safety aspect to them? Uh, Cause they don't have a, an, a I think it's ANSI. They don't have a, a rating on any of the lenses. So I would assume this is just a piece of plastic that's gonna offer offer you no protection for anything. So not only is it gonna be night, is it not night vision? They're not gonna help you in any way. So let's test that. All right. So now I'm gonna use my high precision testing device, and uh, we will see if the glasses can stop it. They actually did stop it, even though they don't have a rating. Okay, I got it. I gotta give credit where credit's due. They did pretty good. So, I still don't think that they have any type of safety rating because whenever I tested safety glasses, it would bounce off and not really leave a dimple. This left a pretty big dimple, but it stopped it. So, moving on. Next product. It, this is made by Bell & Howe. This is the, the same company that made those glasses. They made a motion light. So, this is just very simple. It takes four D batteries. You just simply put the batteries in there, screw this, screw this thing to a, a base of some kind, and you have a spotlight. So some spotlights that I have come across in my lifetime aren't that great. And you can kind of like just move really slow and get around the spotlights. Or you can move really fast and get around the spotlights. So I'm gonna put this thing on a pole. We're gonna go outside and we're gonna see how good the spotlight is. Or really, we're testing more of the motion sensor than the spotlight. Okay, so there's a little bit of light. It's like 20 degrees out here. So the light is right here. I'm just gonna walk in front of it. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even get in front of it. You can see how bright that is, that's crazy. Yeah, that lights up everything. I guess I'm just gonna kind of stand in front of this until it goes out, which gives me the perfect opportunity to tell you that I switched merch companies. So some of you noticed that there wasn't uh, a merch link in the last like seven or eight videos because I was switching to Bunker Branding, which many of you know. Oh, there goes the light. So I switched to Bunker Branding and now all the, uh, 
<laughs> now that the hats, hoodies, shirts, everything's up, there will be a link in the description. Anyway, let's wait for this to go out again. Okay, now it's out. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to just walk very slow and see if I can kind of trick it. Working. <laughs> okay, I think I went just a little bit too fast. I'm gonna try over here from the side. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna try. Let's try far away because far away is, is probably a problem. All right, I'm probably 30 feet away from the light or so. Walking right next to the tree. I'm going kind of slow. Oh, this thing has not caught me at all yet. This is bad. This is not good. <laughs> oh, it caught me there. Okay, it, so it caught me over here. But I made it from all the way over there. I made it 15 feet before it caught me, and I probably just went a little bit too fast. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna walk behind the tree next. See if it'll catch me behind back there. All right, here we go. Let's see. From behind the tree. Wow. Nothing, huh? I went from one side to the other. Oh, but it catches me over here. What? <laughs> How are you not gonna catch me when I go from that side all the way to this side, but I get right here and then you catch me? Okay. <laughs> all right. So as you can see, now the, the downside to this is that this thing does run on, on D batteries. I don't know how long those would last, and I don't know how well those are gonna hold up in the cold, because as you can see, it's freezing out here. So that's the only downside. But as far as the motion sensor and the light, obviously the light, you can see it's extremely bright, lights up the whole backyard. Um, the motion sensor is good. I think that's like more than adequate, especially for, especially for, uh, I think this thing only costs like, I think it was like, $20 for two, so 10 bucks a piece. That's pretty good. All right, so it's actually uh, Thanksgiving today, and that's why I have a different shirt on. So our next two products, we are actually gonna test on the way, on the drive to Thanksgiving dinner. We have tacky glasses, very similar to the night vision, made by the same people. Not quite the same claims, but pretty much. They have a picture of a before and after on here, and it's like, like you just almost can't even open your eyes. But then once you put these on, whew, everything is just crystal clear and beautiful. I'm going to imagine that they're no more than just a regular polar, or uh, just a regular polarized sunglasses. And that's it. I don't expect anything else from them. Enhances colors, blocks blinding glare, improves optical clarity, light filtering technology. All oh, that sounds like a bunch of garbage to me. And the other thing that we have is essentially the exact same thing, but for while you're driving. It is called the, made by the same company, again, it's called the TAC Visor. All this stuff is TAC this, TAC that, it's all something tactical. You can see they put it on a, like a truck. You're supposed to clip this to your visor, and then you have two lenses. You have a yellow one, that is supposed to, I don't even remember. The yellow one is for nighttime driving and the other, and this other one is for daytime driving. I guess we'll try one on the way there since it's daylight and then we'll try one on the way back whenever it's nighttime. That should be interesting. All right, so I've got this thing installed. Let's just flip this thing down. You can tell that's the, the well, maybe you can't tell. <laughs> this is the daytime thing without with, uh, I don't know. 
don't know. Just for fun. Oh, jeez. Let's look through the glasses. Oh, the camera like adjusts. That's odd. I'm gonna be honest, that doesn't look bad through the camera. Real life is kind of a different story. All right, so we're on the road. And <laughs> I'm gonna try out the glasses first. Let's see what I think about them. It's actually not too like sunny or anything today. It's actually, it's actually a really nice day. Let's try out these glasses. <laughs> for okay, so for one, these are some of the most uncomfortable glasses that I've ever worn in my life. These things suck. These are terribly uncomfortable. As far as like the quality, like I don't know how to put it. it it's it's almost just like I don't really notice a difference in anything except for it looks like somebody just put like uh, some type of like light brown like haze in front of my eyes or something like it, it doesn't it's not like typical sunglasses where it's just a kind of like a darker shade it's it is a darker shade but it's more like brown so like whenever I, so for instance when i look at the grass it's supposed to enhance your view or whatever the grass just honestly and the trees well it's winter time so most of the trees are kind of dead anyway but everything just kind of looks more like gray and like dead nothing really looks it doesn't look sharper it doesn't look like it is increasing my visual acuity or whatever wild claim it said i don't really get any of that i mean if you're a sunglass wearer i never wear sunglasses so i'm not really i'm not really used to this but for your like just typical sunglass wearer i think this would probably be fine I mean, I don't see any, like, immediate problem with it. They're just not what they said they are. Here's the this thing, the visor thing. Here's my problem with this. This thing sucks. As far as, like, the, like, the mounting options, everything that you can do to attach it. If I want to use this thing, say, so there's the, the, uh, just tinted one. I can only, if, if it's just right there, I can only see it on a, a half of my field of view. I have to lower my visor to kind of be able to look through it. Now, I will say that whenever you lower this thing in front of you and you do look through it, it does, it doesn't enhance your view or like, or anything like crazy like it said. It's not bad to look through. It, it, just, lo it just looks like you're looking through uh, tinted glass, to be honest. But here's something that's annoying. Whenever I pull this thing down and I'm looking through it, I can see the reflection of my back glass in the front. So when I'm, while I'm going down the road, I can see every time I hit a bump and this thing kind of like shakes, I can see the, re the reflection shaking up and down in, the, in my field of view, which is very annoying. I would not want to drive with this for more than like two seconds because it's annoying. I can kind of angle this up and I can get rid of that reflection of the back glass. I would never use this, but it's not horrible, I guess. Let's say at nighttime on our way back, if I if I'm gonna use this yellow one, wow. Using using the yellow one in the daytime is is crazy. Everything just looks so yellow. So in order to use the yellow one, you have to use the you have to put this one out of the way. And for me since I have to move my visor down to make it like where I can actually see through it and I have my hat on, there's only like an inch or two between my hat and this thing. So if I like need to go look or whatever, then it's like you can't, you're gonna hit your head on stuff. We'll worry about that on the way back. They don't seem too bad. I'm really, I'm really curious about this yellow one at, at nighttime. I don't think it's gonna do anything, but we'll see. All right, so. As you can see, or maybe you cannot see, <laughs> it is now dark. So, it is time to put out the yellow. <laughs> so there's a lot of tail lights and stuff in front of me until somebody's passing me with headlights. Maybe that's gonna be the ticket. Maybe I'll get lucky and somebody will pass me with their brights on. 
Oh, there's somebody. No difference. <laughs> this look. Oh, there's another person with headlights. It doesn't even like lower the glare at all. Literally, all it does is just change the glare from like the headlights are white. It just changes it toward now the glare is yellow. There's no, there's no change at all. This is, uh, this is very strange. And actually, you know what? I would even go as, as far as to say that this makes headlights worse. Because I feel like whenever the headlights, I feel like whenever the headlights hit the yellow lens, the glare is almost kind of like dispersed a little bit. So it's even, like it's even more than usual. So this thing, this uh, whole like nighttime thing is all just pretty much garbage. It's literally the same as the, as the night vision glasses. It actually makes it a little bit worse because it has that just any type of shade in front of you. So like whenever it's dark, it makes it just an even darker. I feel like if you use this, you're gonna be putting yourself in more danger than if you were to just go without it. All right, so our last product is the Airhawk Max. It is basically just a uh, battery powered tire inflator. <laughs> I mean, that, it's that simple. It's a tire inflator kit. You're supposed to be able to just keep this in your car, the battery charged, you got a flat tire, you can fill it up. So, I just so happen to have, as you would expect, a flat tire. You get instructions, which we don't need. You get this thing. This thing feels kind of cheap. There is no way. So, right out of the box, this thing was loose. This thing, I, I assume you can just... Yeah, unscrew this. So that's not a very good first impression whenever it comes out of the box loose. So beside that, let's, uh, let's just go ahead. That should just hook onto here. Okay, simple, <laughs> simple enough. And we got two battery, no. We have one battery. So this is like a dummy battery that you can plug into your cigarette later. That's actually probably very smart. I actually like that a lot. You could charge this battery, theoretically, and have it in your car and then Maybe you don't need this thing for a couple years, the battery's dead. Now you have a way to run it. So, I was, I was gonna say something bad about that, but I actually like that. I think having this instead of two batteries, I think that's a good call. So let's... Okay, it works. It has the, the tiniest little screen. I'm really, I'm honestly kind of concerned about this fill thing. Because this, this does not screw on. And it's just kind of like... I don't know, it seems really... Like it's not gonna work that good. Oh, I mean it, it locks on there pretty good. You can select what you want, I guess. Except for this thing says, this gauge goes in bar. How many bar is in a PSI? I don't operate in bar. I operate in PSI. Maybe we do need the instructions. Oh. See, when you learn, when you read instructions, you actually learn something. If you push the power button, it will tell you, it will change the settings. Now we're in PSI. So I guess I can just like pre-select whatever PSI I want and it will stop at that PSI. Let's go 35 PSI. We're just now to nine PSI. I feel like this thing is gonna work. It's just gonna take forever. Okay. <laughs> I know I set the thing to, I think, 35. We're at 30. <laughs> this thing is so slow. This is the slowest tire inflator I think I've ever seen in my life. I feel like I could probably almost hook a straw to this thing and blow it up faster than this. So, we're not gonna go to 35. I do wanna see if it's gonna shut off by itself though. So let's go 
I'll put it on 31 and see if it shows off by itself. Okay, so it does shut off. If you so if you set it to 31, it shuts off at 32, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever, it does shut off. This thing is also very hot, very, like this part is, it will almost burn you. I do want to check to see if it's, if the gauge is accurate. Oh, calm down. We have heard enough out of you. I don't think that's very accurate because this gauge, I'm reading about 36 PSI. Yeah. So I think this is a little bit off. It does work. It does inflate the tire. So the gauge being a little bit off is not the end of the world because if you had a flat tire and say you put a plug in it and you had nothing else and this is all you had to inflate it, it would get the job done. It just takes forever. I don't even, I don't know how long it took. There'll be like an official time somewhere of how long it took to get from zero to 30, but I would, I would estimate somewhere over the 10 minute mark, which I think is crazy, but better than not being able to drive at all, I guess. So if you're in the market for a tire inflator, uh, I would not recommend the Airhawk Max. I would, I would recommend looking elsewhere, but if you already have one, it'll get the job done. So that is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else that you want to see me test, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.